Hello and welcome to Turf Talk, Kentucky Derby Works Edition. I'm James Scully, joined by Gary Young. And Gary, all the we saw a lot of activity this morning on the track. Justify was out there, looked good, I thought. Uh, and he schooled. Can you talk a little bit about what the Kentucky Derby favorite did this morning? He came on the track. He schooled in the starting gate. Uh, galloped around there like a freight train. Didn't get hot at all. There's a little bit of humidity in the air. Some of the horses got a little neck sweat going this morning because it's a little more humid than normally this time of year. Uh, he looked fine. He yeah. Looked, he, he was. There's nothing uh, you've seen in two days that like uh, discourages you at all with uh, Justify, is there? None whatsoever. All right. Another horse we saw today, he came out yesterday, Boldoro. I thought he just, uh, Boldoro just uh, jogged <clears throat> today. He had a little bit more of a spirited gallop. It was first time I'd seen him since last fall. What were your impressions of Boldoro? He got a little warm on his neck. He didn't seem to do it in a nervous sort of way. Uh, first time around he was okay the second time around he got with it a little bit more and uh, and uh, he's a big big long striding horse also him and justify they uh, they are uh, they're not small horses and he looked he looked fine the second time around let me ask you a question I know uh, you're, you're keen on justify but b before you came to Churchill Downs and started watching these horses uh, exercise in the mornings was there is there a horse that you didn't have on your radar that you down do based on what you've seen on track that you would suggest for like trifectus superfectus and bets like that Hofburg I, I just I think I think Hofburg is a nice horse everything he's doing here in his workout his gallops both before and since the workout um, you know his connections, his, his the the build on him. I think this is a nice horse. I think he has a real chance of making the gimmicks pay uh, pretty good. And if the favorites don't show up, he could even maybe take home the main prize. And I think he, uh, I think he's the kind of horse that could definitely move forward as the as the year goes on and be a. Uh, be a definite force in the three-year-old races later in the year also yeah i mean your take on those horses a little bit like i mean that that's the way the kentucky derby has gone nowadays where horses have fewer starts or more lightly raced and justify and hoffberg only have three stars they're the least experienced horses in the field that that, that isn't a concern in the 20 horse uh, kentucky derby it's you know i'm You'd like to have maybe one or two more starts. I mean, like I said yesterday, Justify is an up-close kind of horse. If he right. breaks like he normally does, when you're laying second or third, the eight, the 20 horse field doesn't mean that much. Hofberg, you know, he's probably going to be back there, you know, in the second half of the field, and that'd be more apt for the inexperienced to show up. He's going to be getting dirt in his face, and you know, there's. Usually some horses that start saying uncle about the 5 8 pole and another group that starts saying uncle at the 3 8 pole and you you just got to hope that uh, you know that you you don't wind up running up up behind those horses. What about Mendelssohn? We, we, we're going to get to see him tomorrow morning on the track. Have you gone and watched his races? I mean, are you like looking forward to What are you looking to see with Mendelssohn when he makes his debut on the track tomorrow morning? You just want to see him moving freely. I'm sure he's going to be looking around because of the strange surroundings and everything. You just want to see that he's moving freely because, let's face it, that's a really long ship that he's coming out of. And, uh, you know, I've looked at his races, and yes, he's a very impressive horse. He was an impressive horse in the paddock at Delmar last year in the Breeders' Cup. Um, you know, if he, if he takes down a derby that is, looks this deep in talent, we're probably going to be looking at uh, a, a, like a supremely talented horse to do what he's going to do. A superstar. Yes, and uh, you know I don't. We got not, the potential for a couple of those though, in yeah, this year's do. field. So yeah. uh, that's part of the excitement. It's such a, a quality uh, field coming into the race. Yeah, I mean nothing against the previous horses that came from the UAE Derby, but this looks to be the livest shooter they've had out of that race, and. Uh, and he landed a very tough derby, or appears a very tough derby going in. So it's uh, it'll be a stern test. Okay, and real quick, uh, we'll get uh, Oaks' question into you, Gary. Uh, first off, a Midnight Bisu, California shipper. She came in uh, two days ago. Got uh, we saw her up here for the first time this morning, and uh, wanted to get your take on Midnight Bisu's appearance and just your overall view of the Oaks Phillies on the track today. Um. 
I Midnight Bees would look fine out there today. I think Mr. Spar is going to blow her out a little bit tomorrow. That's kind of an old school training tactic. Right. Uh, but it's, he's done it before in her previous races, and it certainly worked for her. Um, you know, it's it looks like a classic East versus West showdown. It does. I mean, I think Coach Rocks is a, is a live long shot in that race if you're looking to play beat the favorite. You know, when uh, I, I mean, I, I thought Coach Rocks it might get a good trip in there. I do. All right. Well, great. Well, Gary will be back tomorrow, final edition of Turf Talk. You'll be joined by Ed DeRosa. And looking forward to getting your final picks on the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks. Thanks for joining us for Turf Talk.